Hello my precious friends. It's been a long time since I've been here now. Um, I want to talk about something that um, is actually the gospel of Jesus Christ. The essence of Christianity and how we should live and call ourselves Christians. Um, I know that we all have purpose and it's good to know, to be encouraged in that, that we have gifts, we have callings, we have purposes. Uh, but at the same time, it's very important to go back to Jesus and to look at his life and how he went into the the lowest people on this planet and lifted them up. It's interesting for me to see how he, <laughs> when he came into his calling, he was mocked by the religious leaders and the Pharisees. They call him a blasphemer. He said he was the son of God and they couldn't believe it because he was so revolutionary and rebellion in their eyes because he went to the lost sheep of Israel. He went to the lowest people in the society. And it's like you can see it through Jesus' walk on this planet. The people he lifted up was the people who were at the lowest stage of life. Think about Mary. Mary Magdalene who was a prostitute. The most perfect sentence, I think, Jesus said. They were influenced by the law at that time. And it was hard for Jesus to come in with grace after the Ten Commandments. Where they were allowed to stone people like prostitutes. And Jesus stood up and, and defended her and said, the one who are... Without sin, you can cast the first stone. Most perfect sentence ever. Because we all did mistakes and sins. And it says that the oldest people left their stones and walked away. Because we all knew that we have done something, uh, something wrong. And Jesus turned to her and said, I forgive you your sins. Go and repent and, 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 and don't do it again. And, and you're forgiven. There's mercy. No one is accusing you here. And that was new at that time. Uh, and then later you can see the love that she had to Jesus. She became his follower. She came into the, um, the room where he was sitting with the Pharisees later. And she took her oil, that is the same price as a one year uh, salary at that time. Very costly oil. And she washed his feet and she dried them with her hair. And she anointed his feet. And the Pharisees again are reacting that Jesus is allowing this dirty woman, the lowest of the people, to, to cry over him, to wash his feet. But he says that she has done more for me than all of you. Because she, she loved Jesus. She understood grace. She received grace. And the third time Jesus is in contact with Mary Magdalene is when he re is risen from the dead. And she goes to the grave, she loves Jesus, she's friends with Mary, the mother of Jesus, and these women that was around Jesus, and she comes to the grave, and Jesus is resurrected, and he calls her name. He says, Mary, why are you looking for the living among the dead? I am risen. And go and tell my disciples that I am risen. Can you imagine? 
Jesus did that on purpose to talk to an address that he was risen to a ex-prostitute. He did that on purpose to show us that the least among you I'm going to lift up. I come for the lost sheep of Israel. In 1 Corinthians um, 1, 27. So beautiful. I read it in Passion Translation where it says, I need my glasses. But God chose those whom the world considers foolish to, to shame those who think they are wise. And God chose the puny and powerless to shame the high and mighty. He chose the lowly, the laughable in the world's eyes. Nobodies, as the world think they are nobodies. So that he would shame the somebodies, the people that think they are somebody. For he chose what is regarded as ins insignificant in order to supersede what is regarded as prominent. So that there would be no place for prideful boasting in God's presence. It's important that we have this respect for all kinds of people on this planet when we are followers of Christ people. For me, a true Christian is a person that is willing to go all the way down. I have a Bible study here every Monday. And my house is open for everyone who wants to come because Jesus says, that everybody is welcome to my father's table. Go out into the streets and, 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 and welcome people in to the feast. And that's what I do a little bit. And I notice a lot of people who are struggling mentally are coming to my house. There are people who have demons on them. They have, they are mental cases in many ways. They have drug addictions, alcohol addictions. And also people in high society with money, famous people, all kinds of people comes here. But sometimes I notice that the people that think they are something because they are so established uh, outward, they react that I have some people here that are struggling mentally that are a little bit strange to them and different and 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 they've been going through their personal war like we all have and some of these people don't understand this principle of jesus because they want me to have this vip group where all people are established and you're not offended by anyone you don't feel strange around people or un uncomfortable around people who are mentally ill, for example. But I'm telling you, they are among us. And if you see through the Bible how Jesus was inviting himself home to people like this, to sinners, to the lowest in the society, he picked them up to show the Pharisees and the people that think they are something that, that everyone is valuable to Christ. And Bible says, the one who is the least among you shall be the greatest. I will lift up the, the least one among you. And that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. So Jesus told me, I've been working in mental institution for 12 years. I have compassion with people who are struggling in life. Sometimes I, uh, I also been working with drug addicts and sometimes I meet them on the street uh, and I go and sit down on the street and, and talk to them a little bit or give them a little prayer or something to eat. It's very simple things that I do, but I know it is the Jesus style people. Because Jesus gives us opportunities 
to do what he would have done if he were walking among us. And we call ourselves followers of Christ. And it's not only about prophesying, having a great calling, be seen, uh, you know, that people brag about you. It's about going down to the lowest. And God honors us when we do something that we don't have to tell our friends about even. What you do that only Jesus sees is very valuable to Christ because it shows that your flesh is dead that you're not bragging you're not showing off you're not telling everybody what you do it also says that with fasting that you shouldn't tell anyone when you're fasting because you lose a little bit the concept of fasting when you are bragging that you are starving yourself like you are some very good Christian person. And it means that your flesh is not dead. Uh, I've been working with drug addicts for three years. Uh, at an emergency place for them. And um, I remember when I was going to have a little Bible study. And usually they don't want to hear. Uh, they think it's boring. Because if you try to be a preacher, it's not working. You need to be a human being with compassion and meet people on the level where they're on and show them love and empathy and have respect for people. So I remember the first time I had Bible study at that place and I actually didn't know what I was going to say to them. It was like 15 people sitting in that living room. Many of them have been so close to death so many times of their lives. Their whole life has been like a living hell. They, they, they have managed to battle a very big personal war to come to this place. It's a miracle that they survived. And I remember I stood up and I, I didn't know what to say to them. But what came out of me was that I said that life is like this. That we our life paths cross sometimes. Where we meet each other of a purpose. And I met you guys and you met me in this life path. This crossroad in life. We met each other. And you have something to give to me, I said to them. And maybe I have something to give to you too. And I'm telling you, I got all the drug addicts' attention. Because they know that they are little people. They, they didn't succeed in life, in society. They feel like failures. You know, they have very low self-esteem. And to hear that they have something to give to, to me was so shocking to them. So one guy, he lifted up his hand and he said, excuse me, but what have, what are we to give to you? And I said, you have experience of pain, life. You've been living on this side of life that has hurted you so much. And you have that experience to give to me. And we give each other something when we meet in this life path. And then we maybe move on different ways. But right now we're here. And I'm telling you, it's, uh, it's church to meet people on the street who... Maybe most people don't want to touch or talk to because they smell, they have dirty clothes, they are like losers in many people's eyes. Uh, it's important that we let the love of Christ come out of our lives when we see these people, that we actually see them. We're not only connecting with the cool people, the, the, the prestige people, the popular people, but we treat people with dignity and respect, even if they're laying on the street. It could be a test for you 
that Jesus is laying on the street. It says it says somewhere, I think it's Romans, where where these preachers and and and, and ministers are going to say, or Jesus says to them, uh, they say to Jesus, excuse me, haven't we cast out demons? Haven't we healed the sick? Haven't we had crusades, big ministries? Did all these mighty things on this planet for you? And they bragging about their ministry and their high callings and that they casted out demons and stuff and have anointed services. And Jesus says, very radical, on that day I will say to them, I don't know you because I was hungry and you didn't give me food. I was naked and you didn't dress me. I was in prison and you did, didn't come visit me. I was alone in my house. You never called me. You never pay attention to my little life. So go away from me, you who did injustice to my name, he says. Something like that. Because it's not about the ministry or our callings or titles. Is about what we do to that one person that God pay attention to our attitude towards people in the daily life. And sometimes these people who have, are struggling, they can be a challenge to us. They are sometimes a challenge to me. But I know it's a big part of my calling as a Christian. Actually, I'm afraid to call myself a true Christian if I don't pick up people that are on the street. I can have boundaries, but I still need to pay attention to them and, 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 and stop and give them prayers and give them something. Because when we meet these people who are challenges to our flesh, we are actually growing together with these people. You are giving these people hope when you pay attention to them. And yes, it may cost you your flesh. That's good. But they are also doing something to your spiritual life. Because you need to grow with your fruits. And they help you to grow and develop the fruits of the Spirit. By being patience, patient, endurance, self-control of your emotions. And generous and, and unconditional love. And, and all these things that, that is... The personality of Jesus Christ that we should carry all of us. So it's not a, a specific calling for just a group of Christians to help the lost people that are out there. It's for all of us. When people say that to me, oh, you have a special calling to the homeless people, for example. I don't. I don't have a special calling for them. We all have that calling is included in the package of who Jesus is. If you look how he was walking on this planet, this is what he lifted up. He went to people who were at the lowest stage of life and picked them up to also demonstrate that those who thought they had everything together actually in many ways were more lost than the people out on the street. And then he gives this, this uh, example, Jesus, when he says, which one is right of these two men? They are standing at, uh, in, in prayer and one is, a Pharisee is praying like this, um, thank you God that I'm not like everyone else. Thank you that I'm so put together. And then the other one comes and pray next to him and say, God, give me mercy. I'm a sinner. And Jesus asked them, which one of these two are closest to the kingdom of, of heaven? And he's, of course, the humble person. Jesus went all the way down. If you want to accomplish something, it shouldn't even be a goal to get to be on a high standard. But the high standard for God 
is to go all the way down to where people are at the lowest in this society and pick them up and give them love and attention and sit with them and hug them and talk to them and pray for them. Invite them for a meal to your house. You can imagine how many people I met that are struggling and I always try to give them attention when I meet them on the street. And they're so humble. They say to me, thank you for hugging me. Thank you for saying hello to me, Elena. Thank you for stopping. It should be natural to us as Christians to do that. To care about these people. Because many of these people doesn't have friends. They don't have many friends. And they need you. They need me. They need us. To give them hope. To show them the heart of Jesus. You can't just say that you are a Christian and a believer and a follower of Christ. If you're not doing the works of Jesus on this planet. Have his attitude, his heart, his compassion. Be broken for people. Cry over people. Pray for people. Yes, it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you your flesh. It's a crucifixion of your flesh. And it's going to cost you your time. It's going to cost you your patience. But if you have enough of Christ in you and you understand the nature of God, who is love, unconditional love, you will automatically stop and help these people up and include them. It's so sad to see many times when I, when I include these people in my birthday parties, in my Bible study or wherever I go and have coffee with them or sit with them on the street with my nice clothes. I don't care. And I can see how people walking by are thinking must be something crazy with this woman too. Why is she sitting on the street with these drug addicts or alcoholics? Why is she hugging these crazy people? Why is she inviting them to her nice home? Is there something wrong with this woman? Some people think like that about me. But I know that is Jesus inside of me. The heart of Christ is coming out of my, my heart for the lost. So I just want to give you this message today because I'm crying for these people. I feel so much brokenness and compassion for them. And I know it's it's God's heart. This is the gospel. Jesus came to loosen people. He came to the lost. He came to set people free from bondage. He came to love people who were lonely, isolated, who no one were talking to or believing. He came to them to lift them. It's the highest form of love is to go that extra mile. When somebody asks you to go a little bit with them in life, you, you walk with them. You sacrifice some of your schedule, some of your time and your pleasant little life to do something for another person. Bible says that no one has greater love than the one that gives his life for his friends. And that's what we are called to do. Not only stand on the pulpit and have a nice outfit and everybody loves your sermon. It's not enough. It's what you do in the daily life. How many people of this kind of people are you passing every week? Without noticing, is there anything coming out of your heart when you see these people? We all meet them and we need to come to them and contact them and talk to them and hug them and show them value and respect and appreciation. That's the love of Christ, people. I just want to share this today. I hope you got something out of this. I love to talk about this subject. It's the most important thing um, to live this kind of life, to show the love of Christ to anybody out there. And don't be ashamed. If you are ashamed that I, want, I don't want to be seen with that beggar, I don't want people to think that I'm something that I'm not. 
who cares? Then there is an area in your life where you need to die from. Where you're thinking so much about how you present yourself. Instead, just reach out your hands to the lost people out there. They need your love. They need the love of Christ. They need compassion. They need somebody that sees them. Visit people who you know are lonely. Go to the mental institutions. Pray for people. Give them hope. You can save lives by doing this. This is the love of Christ. Have a nice afternoon. God bless you, my sisters and brothers. Goodbye.